day two of our journey through Seattle, the wild and exotic land of Seattle, the pissy, rainy, cold, terrible city known as Seattle. So day two, I got up to what I call Arizona oatmeal, actually Red Mountain oatmeal. Um, my school used to have, not for students, but for the teachers and others, uh, biscuits and gravy. And I ate biscuits and gravy as you see here. I crumble the biscuit up into little bits, and then I pour the gravy on it, and then I mix it all up so it looks kind of like oatmeal. It's exact. I I hate the texture of eating biscuits and gravy the normal way. It just it doesn't feel right. This, on the other hand, feels wonderful. And uh, the hotel I'm in has biscuits and gravy for breakfast, so <laughs> that's what I got. This is the poster presentation section. I'm not sure what I was trying to capture in this particular shot. But as you can see, there are many rows of these uh, posters. And they are quite long in and of themselves. So there are a lot of posters here. And every one of them is chock full of helpful, healthful information. Contributed, paper po <laughs> contributed papers and posters. This is in the middle of that. Um, and you can see their absolutely lame attempt at disguising it. Just these anemic Charlie Brown Christmas trees on either side. And then you hear, this is, uh, this tree here on the left was the one that was on the right of the last shot. This is the other side of that. So they're trying to hide these, uh, pillars and gas, looks like gas and water hookup. And it's just, it's so sad. Here's the APHA bookstore. Uh, I went through here. It was fun. I love going through the bookstore just to find what kinds of books they're selling. And we get a discount, but pharmacy books are terribly expensive. Uh, there's a limited print run on them. There's obviously only so many pharmacists, so they don't print, you know, the volume that they need to get the pricing down. Um, one of the weird things is also a... I didn't take a picture of it, but there's a book called Trissels, and it's a good, you know, I would say six or seven hundred pages, eh, maybe just, maybe five or six hundred pages, and it costs about a hundred and fifty dollars or something, and then there's another book, I can't even remember what it was about, but it was right next to Trissels, it was also a hardback, uh, a hardcover, and it was almost exactly the same thickness, but it was sixty bucks. And I'm like, what is the difference? And obviously, I mean, Trissel's, if you're in pharmacy, Trissel's is a very renowned and trusted reference source. And this other book was not that kind of book. And that kind of makes up the difference. You're paying for the name and actually, you know, leading information. Uh, while I was there, they had the children's book. Please donate a children's book to the Friends in Pharmacy Book Drive. Uh, which is a supporter of, an APHA is a supporter of Treehouse, giving foster kids a childhood and a future. So, I bought them some books. Dear Dumb Diary and Junie B. Jones y su gran Bogota. Or, I suppose it would be Junie B. Jones. <laughs> and uh, at first I thought the book was, I didn't get what it was doing. I'm like, Junie B. Jones y su gran Bogota? That just doesn't sound right. It doesn't flow from the tongue. But, uh, yeah, it's just a Junie B. Jones, which is a, a book series for kids. And it was written in English originally, and this is just the Spanish translation. So I bought that. And uh, there you can see su gran Bogota. And there, I just love the artwork on these kids. They look absolutely cool. And there's art all throughout that book. I didn't look at the Dear Dumb Diary, but who cares? Uh, this is a blurry, and unfortunately there were a lot of blurry pictures today. A blurry picture of a fountain that was in the uh, convention center. And apparently it is Mary Lou's fountain. And she wants you to come sit down. And I did not sit down, unfortunately. I had to go to uh, Subway. Uh, I gave blood today, and they give you, of course, some juice and cookies, so I had an apple juice and the cookie, which we get a better look at here, Cougar Mountain. And if you imagine that that's an old woman and not a man, it's even funnier. 
the best from the Northwest. It was actually not that great of a cookie, to tell you the truth. Um, it was it was an okay cookie, but it wasn't like a great cookie that you would expect them to have such such a label. So there's my I gave the gift of life. And that Friends in Pharmacy contributor, I got that label for buying the kids' books. And because I am the Student Political Action Network liaison for my school's APHA ASP, uh, ASP is the Academy of Student Pharmacists, I am, I got this APHA Advocacy Key Contact ribbon when I registered for the conference. Um, I actually have one more ribbon that I didn't take a picture of. Uh, there was a booth at the exposition where Geico was giving away ribbons, and one of them said Gecko Lover, which I wanted to take. And another one said, I know what you did last conference. And I got that one because I went to the last conference, so I figured that made uh, sense. Although I do like geckos. I'm a big fan of lizards. Oh well. So this is the exposition, uh, or the exhibition. They, Depending on which conference you go to, they call it different things. And uh, these, I should mention, all of these shots were taken from the exact same spot. So this is uh, to my left side of the con of the exhibition, and then slightly over, and then slightly over, and then slightly over. It is a big, con <laughs> big room. I'm going back a bit here, um, and it goes. I mean, you can kind of see how far down it goes, but I didn't really get a good shot all the way down. There are tons of people, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this in one of my videos here, or if I was talking to another student who had never been to a conference before. The companies bring these big uh, setups with them to the conference. So you can see like Script Pro and Purdue, uh, OxyContin, Prilosec. They br uh, these, what's cool is like there's carpet all throughout the convention center in this area. But then this different color, uh, like underneath the Prilosec here, that's a mat. And I'm, I don't know if the company brings that or if uh, it's provided, but it's, it's substantially thicker. Uh, if you were not paying attention, you could trip on it because it goes up a good two inches or so over the normal uh, carpet. And it's very soft and padded. And that's because the representatives have to stand there for four whole hours and talk. Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I make such a big deal about that because pharmacists tend to stand, you know, 8 to 12 hours every day that they work. And these people have to stand there for four whole hours during the conference. Oh, well. They actually do this, pres uh, the exhibition, I think, uh, I know for sure Saturday and Sunday. They might do it Friday and uh, Monday as well. But I went through all there, got all my swag. All right, so head on over. What's the next picture? All right, this guy was there. Um, he was selling. I can't even see what that says, but it doesn't matter. He looks remarkably like the dean of my school. Um, if anybody from my school, if I just flash this picture, they're like, "Hey, that looked kind of like the dean." But uh, if you actually look at him, he does. He obviously is not the dean. But. I showed the uh, picture to our president, and she's looking at it, and she's like, oh my gosh, is that like his cousin or something? And I'm like, no, I checked his badge. He, uh... Oh, you know, he's not a representative selling anything, because if you look at his little... He's got a name badge and these uh, ribbons on it. I don't think they gave ribbons to the representatives from the drug companies. So he's probably a conference attendee. Who cares? Oh, and look, Santa Claus on the right. <laughs> so this company, they try, they do all kinds of things to get your attention. A lot of companies give away stuff, and that's how they get your attention. Hey, look, come over here, talk to us, and we will give you something for free. This company, on the other hand, put up these cardboard cutouts of Twilight. I didn't realize they were Twilight. I thought they were just two pretentious people, and when I got closer um, on the bottom by their feet it's got like new blood and a little label about it um so i found that out there were when i saw them the first time i doubled back a little bit later to take a picture of them and there were a bunch of girls gathered around taking pictures of them uh you know standing in between them and what have you draping themselves over the uh 
I can't stand that kind of uh, sunken in cheek jawbone thing. It looks so. Oh, I'm trying to think of the the word for it. And gay is kind of the word I was going for, but I saw a movie, and I can't remember what movie it was, and a guy had AIDS, and he was wasting away, and he looked like that. His cheeks were all sunken in, and his jaw became more prominent. Uh, oh, well. This is what I had for lunch. Um, I was in the middle of going to a going to some sessions. In the morning, after I ate breakfast, I had hurried over to the convention center I was late because I stayed to eat breakfast and I wanted to get into an infectious diseases update but the session was full and they closed the doors and hang up a sign that says session is closed and so you can't get in so instead I went to a session on cardiovascular health focusing on tobacco cessation which was very interesting and fun then I uh, then I went and gave blood then I went to the exhibition and then they were having a session on HIV. And so I had to I couldn't I didn't have time to go grab lunch, so I just grabbed this which was inside the convention center. It was very tasty by the way, an excellent little wrap. Uh while I was there, one if you're one of the first like 100 people to get into the session, they give you these little clickers. And they actually call them clickers, which is why I'm calling it that. But they have these trivia questions. Well, not really trivia questions. At the beginning of the presentation, they ask you questions about the material that's going to be presented. And it's basically to gauge how well the audience knows the information before the talk. And then at the, they go over the information. And then at the end of the talk, they ask you the exact same questions again. And they hope to see a bunch of pe you know, a bunch more people get the right answer. And I was one of the people with the things. And I did, I got several of the answers right at the beginning, and then of course all of them at the end. Everybody gets them right at the end, for the most part. And this was the talk, the HIV 2011 Practical Update for Community Pharmacists. The reason why I took a picture of this, this was the, uh, the big, huge projection screen. I love this lady's, not her name, Betty Dong. Um, but just after her name, it's PharmD, FCCP, FASHP, FCSHP, AAHIVE. And then uh, she works at the, with the NCCC, and she's the HIV HCV at the SFGH. I'm like, that's so many letters. You would win Scrabble. Um, the FCCP means she's a fellow of the College of Clinical Pharmacists. Then she's also a fellow of the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. And she's a fellow of the California Society of Health System Pharmacists, and she's also a member of the American Association of HIV Educators, and she, uh, this one spelled out, National Clinicians Consultation Center, and then she also works at the San Francisco General Hospital. But it's just so awesome she has so many letters she can put on her name. Um, to become a fellow, like the fellow of the College of Clinical Pharmacists or what have you, that's not something that you can just like apply for because you meet the prerequisites. For most of those, you have to be invited and accepted to become a fellow. So you have to, you know, be doing stuff. This lady was very good at her talk, and uh, she actually had a cold while she was giving it, and so she kept having to cough and everything. But I, I greatly enjoyed listening to her talk. Uh, there's some pieces of artwork that were hanging up in the gallery. Galleria, I believe that it was the section. And there's some more art. I actually like this because this is uh, just really nice looking, especially with that background. It kind of flows into the wall because of the similarity in colors. The men's room. Why did I take a picture of the men's room? I didn't notice this when I first went to the men's room, but you go into the men's room, and when you leave, it's, it's push both ways. So in the men's room, you push that door to get in, and as you're exiting, that other door has exit written on it, and you push to get out. So I just think it was a very uh, efficient system to have the two doors like that. I know that I've seen bathrooms where they've got you know two doors, and one goes one way and one goes the other way. But they've never been separated like this. Where it actually looked like that second one when I first went to the bathroom... I thought that the second door, the one on the right, was like a, a janitor's closet or something to clean the bathroom. I didn't know that it was actually leading out of the bathroom. So that was cool. 
Ah, oh, there's a big scary Indian head. And it actually, I didn't, I wasn't able to get the whole thing in shot, but at the bottom, probably another, at most, another foot down past the bottom, there were feet. So there was no real body to it. There was like this big head and then this section where you've got like his necklace and an amulet and what have you, and then just feet. And this was standing out there, and I'm like, what is, that looks like some sort of psychic Pokemon, doesn't it? And, uh... You go in close, that's what's up on top of it, that dragon statue. And it and there's a pair of eyes on it, which are actually like catfish amoeba. And at the bottom, this is a covered incense burner. And it says pair. There were two of them. They looked almost exactly the same. And they were set across from each other on the stairwell. On loan from the Seattle Art Museum. Gift of Michael Henry Healy. And as I was walking to... Subway. Um, I was going to Subway because I had donated blood and they told me to stay hydrated and I felt like drinking soda. And rather than pay huge prices for soda in the convention center, I would just go to the Subway down the street, buy a cup, and sit and drink and read some stuff. And on my way, I saw this It's a Small World display. I think it was at a Nordstrom, but I can't be entirely sure. This AMC theater... I think on three sides of this building, at least two, but I think three, there's this big AMC Theaters sign. And every time you walk over to where that big sign is, there's like a parking garage. And I kept, I walked all the way around this building. I did it in a, a complete lap. And I'm like, where is the theater? I want to know what's playing. Well, inside, if, once I got around to the fourth side of the building, there was an entrance to... I don't even know what they called it. Was it Park Place? It's this big mall inside of the building. And then up on the fourth floor, there's an AMC Theaters. And I just took a picture of it because I was so upset with how how much work it took to find this theater. Why couldn't there just be... Oh. Yeah, it says here something like Park Pacific Place. That's what it was, Pacific Place. Too much work to find that. There was a Regal Theater right across the street from this, or maybe like one block down. And it, you could see the movies that were playing from outside. There was a Regal sign, you look through the window, oh, that's what movies were playing. Also, the CEO or the president, I can't remember which it was, of Regal was doing, was speaking to investors recently. And he mentioned to investors that they charge you $6 for a, for a, a tub of popcorn. And their cost for that tub of popcorn is 15 to 20 cents. So even if they if it doubled his acquisition cost, they were worried with the gas prices rising, prices of corn are also rising. And he was telling his investors, don't worry, I charged those stupid people $6 for popcorn, and it only cost me 15 cents. Even if you double that cost to 30 cents, I'm still making a, you know, a healthy profit. Ah, this is my new Pokemon, Metal Penguin. I don't, he's made out of junk, and he has like a giant keg for a belly, and he's inside that Pacific Place Mall. This is one shot of him. It's a, I'm actually slightly downstairs from him. There's like three steps leading up, because I thought it, uh, it made him a little bit more imposing, because you're getting him from that bottom uh, angle. And then this is uh, still from downstairs. You can actually see here in the upper left corner the handrail as you go up those stairs. And uh, just a different side. It didn't come out so well in the picture, but his flipper is right here. You can't really tell the separation. Up on the second floor, there is a toy shop called Top Ten Toys. And it is like an old school classic toy store. They don't have like a bunch of um, electronic toys or anything. I was about to say they don't have a lot of cheapy plastic toys. Actually, there's a couple of them in there too. But I would definitely shop for toys for kids here. It's wonderful. It's all kinds of actu actual toys, like stuff that you would play with, you know, in your hands, building stuff, knocking stuff down, needing to have a little bit of an imagination. But they had a giant Kinect's Ferris wheel, and this was turning as uh, as I was taking the picture. So there's a little bit of a blur to it. 
Another store that they had in the mall was called a Pee in the Pod Maternity Redefined. And unfortunately, the other picture for it didn't come out. But it's basically like for women who can't bear to be out of trendy designer clothes just because they're pregnant. And it's like we take the top name brand clothing and make adjustments so that you can wear it while you're pregnant. And it just seemed so unnecessary. I mean, you're pregnant, wear maternity clothes. You don't need to get into, oh, true religion brand jeans. That's not a priority in life. But I just thought it was kind of funny. Maternity redefine. Tivana. I had to take a picture of the Tivana sign mostly because as I was walking, I was walking all around this Pacific Place mall, and the girl out front, she's got a little tray, and she's like, would you like to try a fruity tea? And it just sounded so funny. I started laughing and laughing, and I couldn't I couldn't stop, and she's looking at me, and I'm like, I'm sorry, but that, that just sounded so gay. Would you like to try a fruity tea? Not a fruit tea, but a fruity tea. Oh. This, I don't even remember the name of this store, but this must be where the Blue Men Group shop because uh, all of the mannequins in this store are blue. You can even see up here in the upper right corner one in the background that's blue. So it's not like just the window display. All of them were blue. They're blue. Da -ba -dee -da -boo -da -ba -da -ba. All right, so now after walking all around the mall, I found that I still had to waste about half an hour before heading back to the convention center. So I went into the toy store, obviously, and they had color forms. And if you don't know what color forms are, you are a poor, deprived child. These were invented in 1951. And basically, they're just little floppy uh, colored plastic shapes. Like on the front here, you've got the big red circle and the green rectangle, the blue triangle, a little yellow circle. And there's like a black board, and you just stick the color forms onto the black board. And they stick on, and they and you can peel them off. But you use them to make pictures and experiment, and it's it's artsy. And uh, they, they've won all kinds of awards. They were one of the very first toys that were ever advertised on, chill, uh, on television. And this logo... For a lot of people, this is a, uh, a famous logo. People recognize that logo. Unfortunately, it was wrapped in plastic, so it was so shiny, you get uh, the pictures of whatever that was next to it reflected very heavily in the uh, color forms box. And you can see that they are $33.95, which is a decent price. That's a big, heavy box of color forms. You get what you pay for. This one, Mythical Beast Coloring Book. First of all, just because it's myth Mythical Beast's coloring book, I would buy it. Second off, the guy's name is Fridolf. And that's an awesome name. But third, that unicorn is compensating for something. I mean, I mean, really. That just seems so... That's how unicorns uh, used to be pictured, though. They used to have excessively long horns. We've kind of dialed that back, so you just have like a... You know, something that doesn't seem quite as fanciful. Playmobil. This, I was walking by. They have a whole wall. A whole, actually two walls of Playmobil. And I walk by and I see this. And then I do a double take and I go back and I'm like, really? The little guy's in a Speedo in the, uh, in the bath. And then I'm like, really? The little girl is trapped in a, in a jar. <laughs> and there's like acid raining down on her from above. Help, let me out. But this place that actually uses water, and that was kind of cool. And then I saw this, and I'm like, okay, that's actually kind of cool. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Do you see that? There's a zombie pirate ninja on that ship. And actually, take a look at this. Look at his eyes right now. And then look at his eyes right there. There's, there's a definite change in character. Uh, further out, they just kind of look like a blur. But here, they there's a lot of detail to the eye. And these kind of cool, and I believe they glow in the dark as well. Why don't I have kids to buy all this crap for? Ah, look at that. If you're not aware, this is an excellent puppet. And then, you know, cue the sound effect. 
If you're not aware of what that joke is, you have to watch Ashen's more often. He's on YouTube. But Chef Excellence. It, I think somebody submitted a picture of this very puppet to the art contest, which would be kind of cool. All right, so I think this is the very last picture I took. This is just a big piece of artwork in uh, in the convention center. I was oh no, this isn't the last picture. There's more than this. I was just I was talking to myself because I do that sometimes, and I even mentioned that I prefer the artwork. There was another piece of art that was very abstract, and I had taken pictures earlier of like that the pictures way up on the wall with the uh, the barn and the wheat and the wheel. And I was saying I prefer the art that ha that's more realistic looking. I'm not as fond of impressionist art. I realize there's a certain amount of um, skill required to give the impression of what you want you know people to see. But at the same, but then I saw this and I'm like, okay, that's actually kind of cool because it looks like just a bunch of blur of paint, but you actually get to, you can see the eagle. So I, I, I felt a certain level of appreciation. So then up on the fourth floor of the convention center, if you looked across the street, actually I think it was on the sixth floor, there's a playground inside the building across the street. And so I took a couple pictures of that. That was just kind of cool. This one's kind of a worthless picture but you can see some toys and what have you in there that night um, after the HIV thing oh after the HIV lecture uh, I went to an a level three lecture that's like advanced practice um, level one is introductory level two is intermediate and level three is like you need to know what you're doing but a level three uh, presentation on how to titrate insulin doses in patients and when I went there, I saw a uh, professor from Thomas Jefferson School of Pharmacy. When I had gone to the Pennsylvania Pharmacists Association meeting to compete in the OTC competition, they had a presentation by this same professor on uh, incretin mimetics in diabetic patients. And so uh, when I arrived, I arrived a little bit late to the, uh, the insulin dosing presentation and I'm going around, and they're all working in groups. They give you these cases, and the group at each table looks at them and tries to determine, you know, what needs to be changed or what can be done to help the patient. And as I'm looking around, and no matter what, I'm thinking I'm going to have to sit down with, you know, strange people and just kind of show up mid mid meeting. And then I see him, and I'm like, oh, that guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to diabetes. And I sat at his table and I spoke to him a little bit as we were going along. And he had one of the clickers to answer the questions. And at the end of the thing, he's like, he passes the clicker over to me. And he's like, all right, let's see how well you do to, to uh, answer the questions at the end. And I got them all right except for one. I forgot that uh, they wanted to convert a patient from uh, bolus dosing to an insulin pump. And I did all of the math correctly except I forgot to divide the... Uh, the bolus dosing from I forgot to divide his insulin dose in half, half basal and half bolus, and so I was ending up with 1.6 units an hour when I should have been getting 0.8 units an hour. So that was the one uh, that we got wrong. But I corrected him on another one where uh, the patient was supposed to be getting 8 units an hour and he had said 12 units an hour. So ha. So then the Pennsylvania reception. Um, my school was there. There were only the two people from my school, well, my campus, and then there were four people left from the Florida campus of my school. So we met up inside. Um, this is just a picture of the room. It's pretty blurry because it was dark, and uh, my low light settings make blurry pictures. There's the food, some, uh, you know, kebabs. I call it kebabs, it's not a kebab, but piece of steak on a stick. Uh, these little things had chicken inside of like a dumpling little mini pizzas the uh, this the white one here is a water cracker these are actually cookies but they were placed with crack on the same plate as the crackers next to the cheese platter which is this and so I there is actually a valid reason to eat cheese off of a cookie but most people wouldn't get that and that's why there's such a huge <laughs> 
amount of the cookies left, whereas all the crackers are gone. Um, while I was there, I don't even remember what I was taking a picture of right then. I was testing something, but I just so happened to get a picture of the awesome dude, Dr. Hussar, from yesterday. So I kept it. I would have otherwise just deleted that picture out of hand. And then this is for my brother. He plays a character called Hogue the Rogue, and they have a Washington State wine. Um, I'm not saying it's like the official wine of Washington State. I just mean it's grown in Washington. Uh, the vines are in Washington, and it's called Hogue. So there we go, Hogue. Uh, and then after that conference, uh, that reception, I went over. Walmart was sponsoring a dessert reception. And I wanted ice cream, but they didn't have ice cream. I'm so upset. But while I was there, they had uh, these mimes walking around. And it's it's not a very good picture. I took a couple pictures, but again, the low light situation, they were all blurry. But they uh, you can see this guy and her as well. They have swords. And uh, there the, there's a better picture of it. And they kept posing for photographs by, you know, pretending to stab people. In this particular case, each other. And they also had people doing caricature art. And I wanted to get a picture of like the process. So you can see, I don't know who this girl is, but she's there. And you can see the uh, picture has started. The guy drew her nose first, then her uh, the shape of her head, and then the eyes. And then it progressed there. She smiled, so he added the smile. And it's kind of upsetting because I thought it looked a little racist that he drew these giant front teeth on her, and she's Asian, and that's kind of the the caricature back from uh, the old like Bugs Bunny cartoons. They would always draw Asian people with giant buck teeth. And this is actually the second Asian girl he had sketched with big buck teeth in the po in the photo. But uh, they were very happy. Actually, at the end of it, once he added in all the other details, you didn't notice it as much. But it really stood out at this point. Uh, then on my way back to the hotel, I took a different route than last time, and I passed by the United States Courthouse where they have the giant tooth of justice implanted in the glowing sigil upon the earth in front of the building. And it's awesome. This is actually a D&D &D picture. I can easily think of something uh, cool to do with a giant tooth stuck in the ground. But that is leading us back to oatmeal, which is what I will be eating tomorrow morning. And uh, I mentioned in the the Internet Sucks video that I'll have to upload these when I get home. So... Until then, bye-bye.